Jim here. So this is going to be uh, a little different. This will be just one of my uh, commentaries, maybe a blog, just a few rambling thoughts. So no beer in hand today, just uh, just uh, us chatting here. So today's topic is going to be faux craft beer, fake craft beer. There's a there's a backlash in the community against perception of beers that are owned by big beer, and therefore they're not that good. So there's two. Uh, two definitions. The Webster's definition of craft is the the skill of making something by hand. That's the one I kind of like to aspire to. It's, just, it's a skill set, making a good product. It, it's an art form. You have to learn how to do it. But the Brewers Association, which is an independent, non-profit group that represents a large percentage of uh, beer brewers in America has a slightly different definition of what a craft brewery is. And that is a brewery that is small, so less than six million barrels per year, uses traditional methods, okay, and is not more than 25% owned by a uh, non-craft beer company. And I think we can take that in a couple of pieces. Small, yeah, I got it. Small is an interesting thing. Small is that local brewery you found. It's that feeling of discovering that band at a club that you got to, that you knew about. It's that restaurant in town that you know about that marks you as a local because you know how to get there. It's that. Small feels special. It feels exclusive. And I'll admit, when that band is now on a multi-city stadium world tour, and that restaurant you loved is now a chain that you can go to in any strip mall in America, it feels less special. So I get people being against big. But a counterpoint to big is there's a lot of people that maybe don't have small craft breweries right where they live. And a bigger brewery making more than 6 million barrels a year might have the opportunity to get their product out to a larger audience, expose it to more people. So my opinion, and please tell me, tell me what you think, bigger isn't necessarily worse or better, it just is. But really, the, it's the last part of that definition that I think is where the, where the problem lies, which is the not owned by greater than 25% of an outside company. And I think this is where people get mad because there's really, there's small craft breweries that were formed and expanded. And hey, expanding is good, by the way. Don't ever think that that's bad. I mean, most people don't go into business to not make money. I mean, there's some artists out there that just do it for the love of the game. But in general, having been associated growing up, having parents that have run small businesses and having plenty of friends who run small businesses, you don't run a business to not make money. So you need to make a little bit of money. And sometimes growing bigger means you have the ability to get better equipment, more quality control, a lot of those things that are usually harder to do when you're just starting out and you're struggling to make ends meet. And that's where the problem comes in in some cases because now you've got a prof, you've got a product, you've got some market share, you've got some people behind you, you've got a following, and along comes Mr. Big Brewery with a suitcase full of money. What does that mean? Well, I wish there was a one-size-fits-all answer, and I have my opinions, and I think a lot of that depends on the brewery. It depends is the answer. Some places that get bought out continue to be what they are. And I would like a little bit more transparency. I think there are some places that still like to say they're, they're, you know, they're a mom and pop joint using grandpa's old recipe when they're really now multinational and they're owned by InBev or, or Anheuser-Busch or one of those other huge companies that owns half of, half of the beverage companies in the world. I get that. But does it mean they're bad? I will not call out breweries by name that have been bought out. I will tell you that there have been ones that I have reviewed that no longer meet that definition of craft. And uh, I will link to a couple of different websites below if you want to check out places maybe you didn't know that aren't independent, so to speak, anymore. But aside from that feeling of being a little devious, does it make it worse? I don't know. It's tough. I mean, can an independent or can a not a corporate owned brewery 
that started out making really cool and innovative things, can it retain that level of freedom with corporate overlords running it? I don't know. I think it depends on the company. I mean, it also depends on, you know, I don't know, is, is, is Disney era Star Wars better than George Lucas on his own? Maybe it, 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 it depends on your thing. I would say let your, your experience and your taste be your judge. Don't necessarily kick people out the door just because, oh my God, I found out they were owned by an independent company or a big company. Oh God, I, I can't like them anymore. This band got too big, I can't follow them anymore. I will say I make one exception to that, and that is the little small, and like I said, I'm not gonna name names here, I will link to some websites below, but the super fake breweries that are, that are made from whole cloth or beers that are made from whole cloth as craft beers right off the gate from Budweiser or from one of the big companies, and they're sold from the get-go as, you know, you know, the independent brewer sifting through a handful of hops and everything else, when really it was a big corporate decision made in a boardroom. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad product. And that's the thing. The fact that big beer is interested in this is possibly is a good thing, because that means that people are... I, there wasn't an IPA on the market 40 years ago, widely available. Now there are dozens of them. So maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's not. I will leave that choice up to you. But before we go, I will leave you with two what I think are interesting facts for you to ponder and comment on below. One, all I'm getting my information from the Brewers Association. It's like I said, it's a nonprofit or com or organization that represents beer makers in America. So I'm pulling my facts from them. One, greater than 98% or approximately 98% of the greater than 6,000 breweries in America are independent, meaning they're not owned by big companies. Whew. We can all breathe a sigh of relief. And they will do you a favor, and I will link an image of it in this video. They will mark beer. It's a voluntary program, so it's not like they go out and find it. You know, you have to be a member of that organization, but they will certify an independent craft brewer with a mark, you know, a label that they can put on their bottle caps or on their bear labels or something to let you as the consumer know that they have met that earlier definition of being an independent craft brewery. So if that's really important to you, that information's out there. The other interesting fact is, like we said, 98% of more than 6,000 breweries are independent, but that of those breweries, they only control approximately 13% of the market share. So they make up 13% of the beer sold in America. So what does that mean? It's a tough one. Does that mean that big beer is keeping the man down and everyone would be drinking the dankest of IPAs if it wasn't for the man and fight the power? Maybe, could mean that. Or it could mean that maybe a large percentage of the population isn't into what we're into. Maybe they're not nerding out on it. Maybe some people just want a Bud Light. And you know what, that's okay. I'm not gonna judge people. Do what you gotta do, like what you like. Don't ever let me judge you. Anyway, that's my first hack at a, uh, a little commentary, a little blog post, a little something. Thoughts that have been beeping around, or bopping around my nugget for a while and I wanted to get there out there. So please, I want this to be a conversation, so if you have any comments, thoughts, please comment down below, let me know what you think. Hey, man, am I out to lunch? Screw you, man. It's the man, fight the power, keeping the man down, or whatever you think, let me know. Please, if you like this kind of thing, let me know, because I'll keep doing more of them. And uh, smash that like button, subscribe, and all those things. So uh, until next time, guys, we'll see you around. Uh, keep, uh, keep looking out for the good stuff. See ya.